Um, so today I'm going to talk about Cinegrid, which is a project that I've been involved with for about, uh, well, almost 10 years now. Um, and Cinegrid uh, is a virtual research organization um, spread out all over, all over the world. Um, today I'll be giving you some background on um, RIANS, which is where I work now, and they're the Research and Education Advanced Network of New Zealand. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Cinegrid. I'll give you a survey of some of the projects, uh, maybe uh, initiate a discussion about why, um, why here, why now. Um, and I'd like to leave you with a call to action um, because it's really about community. Um, and I am just one person, as passionate as I may be, um, I can't do these things alone. So first of all, um, uh, maybe a little bit more about me. Uh, I think of myself as an academic. I spent nearly 20 years at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California. And the Naval Postgraduate School is a federally funded research university whose students are mostly uh, military officers from uh, the U.S. and from our allies around the world. So you would see Kiwis there, you would see Aussies, uh, people from the U.K., Turkey, Greece, Germany, uh, maybe even a few from France. Um, and there, I was a founding member of the Moves Institute, Modeling of Virtual Environments and Simulations. And back in the 90s, that was a really cool thing. Um, and so I've always been motivated by what is difficult to do on a network. Um, and uh, about 10 years ago, I turned my gaze from 3D virtual environments, um, because Second Life seemed to be solving that problem, onto um, something that is infinitely scalable called digital video it will eat your network alive. So Cinegrid is inspired um, by the convergence of artists and engineers working together. Artists need technology to express their vision, well, in this space anyway, um, and engineers need artists to show them the unimagined to inspire them onward. And those are words by Mr. Lauren Hare. He's a co-founder of Cinegrid. Um, uttered 10 years ago and still true today. RIANS, where I work now um, as the Science and Education Outreach Manager, is the National Research and Education Network of New Zealand. We provide uh, network services to all the universities, many of the polytechnics, uh, Crown Research, and other institutions uh, in the public space and uh, in the innovation space. Uh, we are um, uh, a growing network and uh, undergone a lot of changes in the last four years, um, such that we are now on equal footing with some of the best networks in the world. Um, and for a country the size of New Zealand, both geographically and demographically, that is a, is a pretty astounding achievement. So we connect, Rianz connects, connects New Zealand to the world. We are among about 140 other national research and education networks. And through very high speed connections from here to Sydney and here to Los Angeles, we connect uh, New Zealand to the rest of the world. So you may not see that um, those lines on here, hopefully it'll be showing up uh, in the PowerPoint that I can provide afterwards. But um, you see that it's the world, and you'll take my word for it that we connect you to it. Um, so here are some facts and figures. 99.998% um, network availability. That means we hardly ever go away. We are a persistent network. And unlike your home network that might fluctuate with your neighbors watching of cat videos, um, we don't. Um, we are engineered for capacity. Um, last, uh, uh, last year, in 2014, we had a 46% overall traffic growth. That meant that we were carrying almost half as much uh, network traffic again as the year before. And 94% of our members, those people at the universities and the research institutes and the polytechnics, say that RIANS is essential or very important to their work. Oh. Um, and just another note, uh, I'm going to be talking about video today, and we all know that video is an important, has emerged as probably the most important <coughs> medium on the network. 
Uh, Cisco estimates that 64% of all of today's internet traffic is video, and by 2019, that will be 84%. So we are increasingly moving away from written to video. So what is high speed? High speed is about a bit like um, your dog. Everybody's dog is special. Um, mine is really special. Um, if you were on dial-up and you wanted to transfer a 250 gigabyte file, it would take you 291 days. Um, so that is internet circa 1995. Um, if you're on, oh, and we go just one step further on ADSL, which is probably what a lot of us in this room have, that same file transfer would only take you three days, 16 hours, and 30 minutes. I still don't have that much time. Uh, on the RIANS network, which operates between one gigabit per second and 100 gigabits per second, it would take either 31 minutes or 18.62 seconds. Think about that. 18 and a half seconds to transfer a quarter of a terabyte. That means you can do things on this network that you cannot do on other kinds of networks. And that's what Cinegrid is all about. Cinegrid is about the convergence of these high-speed networks and very, very high-quality media. So its mission is to build an interdisciplinary community that focuses on the research, development, and demonstration of networked collaborative tools to enable the production, use, preservation, and exchange of very high-quality digital media over photonic networks. So a lot of times when you talk about a network, you talk about the distribution of content. Syndigrid is about the creation of content. It is about how we work together locally and remotely to build uh, uh, movies and images and multimedia of immense scale. Who is Cinegrid? Well, there might be some names on this list that you may recognize. Um, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, uh, their Science and Technology Council. They have a little show in March. They give away little statues. Um, there's a little less known show in February where they give away certificates, and that's for the science and technology nerds like me. Um, Beijing Film Academy, California Academy of Sciences, which is very similar to uh, our host, Te Papa, here today. Other people like Walt Disney Studios, uh, Lucasfilm, Skywalker Sound. So it's an interesting amalgam of industry, academic, and even government. So as I mentioned before, it's co this convergence of high-speed networks and um, really high-quality media that motivates Cinegrid. And looking over the long history of media development, we see that there are basically three large categories of our societies uh, that drive these innovative technologies. There are entertainment, media, art, and culture, which is largely what Cinegrid focuses on. Science, medicine, education, and research, which is a new direction for Cinegrid. And then military intelligence, security, and police, which is not an area that Cinegrid really touches on, um, but they, uh, they do share some commonalities. In fact, uh, working for the Navy, um, the Navy was one of the largest producers of video in the United States. Um, there's a lot of drones. Uh, but adoption of these digital media means that we face convergence in all three of these areas. So whatever touches on the military may also touch on the media and the arts, may touch on science and research and medicine. Fast networking for distributed applications. We live in the cloud now. I used to give a talk called Get Your Head Out of the Clouds. Um, but you, I can't give that talk anymore because we are in the clouds. Um, we have access to shared devices. We can share computing resources. Um, we have specialized computers and massive storage. Um, people, if you could teleport someone from 15 years ago into today, they would be astounded that you could have 128 gigabyte flash drive in your pocket. That's more storage than existed except for on the very top level of supercomputers. Um, we do have collaboration tools for distributed teams. We call them Skype and FaceTime and TeamViewer and on and on and on. Um, they have their limitations um, and we work in Cinegrid to break down those limitations. 
We have robust security for intellectual property. Um, we have higher quality sound and picture, and I'll talk a little bit about that. And we have the next generation of trained professionals. So that is a key theme for Cinegrid. We're about training that next generation um, in these collaborative partnerships. So what's a big image? This is not an HD image here, so you probably can't read this, this tiny little uh, font down there. But if I were showing you, it's probably not even HD. It's probably VGA or maybe something less than that. Um, but if I were showing you an HD image, you'd want to be about um, three picture heights away from it to have the best clarity. In 4K, which is quadruple HD, about a picture height and a half. At 8K, which is four times 4K, 16 times HD, 0.75 screen heights away from the subject in order to be able to see all of the detail included therein. That means that 100 degree of your view is going to be filled with image. That means you'll have a more immersive, evocative experience. Um, but it also means you're going to have a lot more data to contend with. So this is our little data pyramid. It should be inverted, but um, I didn't build this. I stole it from Lauren Hare. Um, we have consumer HD, and that can exist in about 4 megabits per second to about 25 megabits per second. So that means if you have an ADSL connection and you want to watch a Netflix show in HD, you're good to go, as long as your neighbors aren't doing all that same thing at the same time, and then you're going to have some buffering. Um, but if you wanted to watch uh, stereo, you're going to need 20 megabits to 3 gigabits per second. 3 gigabits is 3,000 megabits per second. That's faster than your home network, but maybe not faster than your network if you work at a university or a research institute. Scaling up beyond that will need compression to deal with these things. And at the very top end, that 8K video at 60 frames a second is an astounding 192 gigabits per second. That's twice as fast as the fastest network known to man. So we're not there yet. What we try to do in Cinegrid, though, is, is connect the creative people to the technical people. And it turns out that video is a really good media uh, for network engineering. Network engineers love it because it fills the pipe. And the audiences like it because when it goes right, it looks spectacular. And when it goes wrong, you can tell. So uh, video, turns out, is an excellent um, uh, way to test the robustness of a network. But content creation is very hard. Um, so we're not, in Cinegrid, we don't tell somebody, don't use your tool, use our tool. We would never say that to an artist, probably not even to an engineer. What we say is, let us put a little secret sauce in the middle. Let's connect you with your collaborators over these high-speed networks. Let's give you tools that seem familiar but connect it up in new ways. So you might see something like um, a sound engineer working on the same soundboard like we have here, but the soundboard is also on the network and it's driving uh, a, an audio rendering engine 150 miles away or 500 kilometers away. So you, it, with Cinegrid, you could have um, a colorist in Los Angeles, principal photography happening in, happening in Vancouver, and the director to be in San Francisco. And everybody gets connected up, and they work as if they were in the same room. So that's kind of one of the goals. I just want to do a quick survey of some of the projects that we've done in Cinegrid. So this is an underwater camera test, a 4K camera um, in an underwater housing. Um, done by uh, Adam Ravitch of Arctic Bear Production. Um, and he was generous enough to donate this to the Cinegrid Exchange, which is our online content repository. This is uh, a demonstration that we did last year. Um, we had a patient in San Diego, a general practitioner in Queenstown, connected to him over a 100 gigabit per second network in Queenstown and um, a specialist doctor in Chicago, and this is Dr. Uh, Margolis, and he's a, um, he's a dermatologist. So we conducted a three-point telemedicine uh, demonstration where we had um, 
the doctors in remote locations directing a, a technician in San Diego to do an examination of um, this patient. Um, I gave a talk earlier in the year called the two meter mole, uh, and it was really two meters tall. This is a, a piece that was recorded very early in 2007 for the Holland Festival. It's a opera called Er la Notte, and it was the first time that 4K video was transmitted over the Atlantic with 5.1 uh, surround sound uh, for the Holland Festival. And I can tell you, being in the auditorium in San Diego and listening and watching on this giant screen um, was, was nearly as good as being there. Um, it was really an amazing experience. This is um, a Tycho demonstration. And you can see that we have a live actor. We have a, an actor that's being beamed in from another location. And then we have a third actor that's having his uh, motions captured over a motion capture system um, that's just being represented by an avatar. This is digital film restoration. It's a remote collaborative project from Keio University um, of an early film from the Kobe region. So uh, the uh, detail in the film um, is visible on some of these very large displays and um, the film restoration people work collaboratively uh, to fix it. This is a piece that I did. Um, we took a 4K streaming camera. There were only a couple of them in the world at the time. And we put it up in a blimp. So um, you get to do stuff like that when you work for the Navy. And I was just walking across campus one day. And I said, I really want to put a camera up in the air on it. But I can't put one on, a, on, a, on an airplane because there's too many vibrations. And I don't want to put one up in a balloon because I want to be able to steer it. Does anybody have a blimp? And sure enough, the Navy has a blimp. So this is me on a blimp. This is a piece that was done by an art student in San Diego called uh, Shizuka. Um, and each of these frames is hand drawn over a 4K video. And of course, for all of these, there's sound and picture. Richard Weinberg at the University of Southern California does remote microscopy. Um, and he puts a 4K camera on a microscope and shares the images uh, with collaborators around the world. Imagine this technology in the context of curation, um, preservation, and restoration at a place like Te Papa, where you can be sharing this um, very finely detailed work uh, with the collaborator somewhere else let's say, um, at the Smithsonian or the British Museum. Uh, here we're doing 4K interactive digital cinema color grading um, from Cinepost in Prague down to Cal IT2 in San Diego. And we have set up in the lower right-hand corner of this the same workstation as this guy would have if he were in his lab um, in, uh, in Prague. This is a growing documentary. This was a documentary that was sourced from social media um, about the aftermath of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan. Um, and it was a 4K project by uh, students from KO DMC Media School. Uh, and they use social media to reach out to people to get photographs and video. And they put together um, a very moving 10-minute uh, piece. This is another one of my projects. It was the world's first dual live streaming 4K. And it um, uh, took an image from the Monterey Bay Aquarium and sent it down to uh, San Diego and Tokyo. This was the technology that they used to simulcast the 2012 Olympics and the 2014 FIFA World Cup. So joining Cinegrid provides uh, an integrated approach to funding and collaboration, a framework for uh, groundbreaking digital media experiments, a forum for members to exchange knowledge and information, access to Cinegrid Exchange digital media content. You can see it. If you Google Cinegrid Exchange, you can see it uh, uh, streaming. Uh, joining Cinegrid gets you get the, uh, the actual uncompressed stuff um, and a host of other things. So I've intimated that we, we do remote collaboration. And how do we do that? We build these things called um, OptiPortals. And we run a middleware called Sage, Scalable Adaptive Graphics Environment. This is the Sage Cave at EVL. It's gigantic. It's, it's a 270-degree circle. It costs about $3 million. 
Um, not everybody can afford one of those. Um, so some people build smaller ones and some people even build smaller ones than that. This is the one we built at Rian's and it's um, 4K televisions that we bought at Harvey Norman or Smith City for a couple of thousand dollars each. Um, and it's attached to a rendering cluster and the network. And this is the device that we use for the three-way medical uh, telepresence demonstration. We also do academic uh, publications. So if you're an academic, um, we usually publish in the future generation computing system. I just edited a special issue that should be coming out very soon. But most importantly, we build community through workshops and collaborative projects. This is um, a group photo from the Cinegrid workshop last year. We'll be having one in San Diego again this year. Um, and the first time I went in 2007, uh, which was the I guess the second one, um, I, I, I was so excited I couldn't even sit in my seat. It was just really, really great. It was a great vibe like we have here at NDF. So um, this is a shameless plug. If you're interested, um, these are the kinds of topics that are covered. Uh, we'll be releasing the Cinegrid agenda for the 2015 workshop in beautiful San Diego. Um, and this is the slide that is my call to action. Um, so Cinegrid is about innovation and about community. It engages its members in new areas of rich media intensive forms of art, entertainment, distance learning, scientific visualization, remote collaboration, and international cultural exchange. It is an economic driver of the future. Um, I heard someone this morning say that uh, milk prices were down. Well, um, the creative class is growing and it's a huge economic engine. The New Zealand government is, is funding ultra-fast broadband. They are a major funder of the RIANS network. Um, and I believe that Cinegrid has a place in Wellington as a hub of, of um, digital creative arts, um, of digital cinema. Um, I think that uh, it could be a leader in Australasia in this, in this area. So um, that's all I have. I've got more slides, but I won't talk to, about the digital dilemma today. That's another t topic. Um, here's my contact information. Um, I am uh, available for questions for a few minutes. Am I not, yes, Leith? Um, I know that was a very uh, high speed uh, talk, lots of data, um, but hopefully I've inspired you to uh, uh, reach out and um, connect with me to build this community here in New Zealand. Thanks so much, uh, Jeffrey. Right, who would like to ask questions? We've got time for perhaps four questions. You've been stunned into silence. Neither haven't. There is time for this question. Okay, well, I'll ask the question. Let's say um, you're a local. Uh, um, library and you have a library near to a university and there's a lot of um, science, technology and art happening in that area. How would you get connected to Cinegrid and start to make use of some of that? You know, is it open? Is Cinegrid open to that sort of collaboration? Certainly is. Um, so one of the things that um, we saw in the Netherlands, which is a local chapter, where um, a group of like-minded people formed a local chapter of Cinegrid and they approached the Amsterdam City Council and they said, we would like to make a, a drop-in space where anyone can come in and, um, and utilize these infrastructure heavy resources. So they built a small editing bay, they purchased a 4K display device, they got a couple of cameras and they invited the community to come and one of the um, uh, invitees was a group of uh, local uh, college students and each one of them made a one minute piece uh, about it was called um, uh, four, one minute 4k and they each made a one, little one minute piece with this equipment um, and were able to get themselves exposed to this this creative process then those were all packaged up together and uh, shown at the Cinegrid workshop so this tiered approach let people who might not have all of these resources 
participate. If I were a local library next to a university, um, it's really more about um, the, the project and the collaboration than it is about Cinegrid. Um, if you wanted to do something like um, these short pieces uh, from a student perspective, Cinegrid would step in and say, here's the camera, here's the editing software, here's the computer, um, let's help you with that. Now, as an institution, you can join the greater Cinegrid uh, community. Um, I think nonprofits, it's $10,000 a year, $5,000 a year, or $2,500 a year. You can also join as an individual. My idea is to aggregate and pool our resources and join as a community um, at some level. Um, but anyone can go to the workshop. It's an open, open uh, community. So the question was, you, you need to be part of REANS. Well, not necessarily. Um, uh, it helps, especially if you want to do these large-scale networked demonstrations. Um, but uh, anyone could build one of these remote collaborative uh, uh, displays called a Sage OptiPortal. Um, we've built them for as little as $5,000 using very small. Um, and that's, that's a community and a window into um, a, a larger, even than Cinegrid group. Um, if you're a school, you're likely already connected to some kind of non-commercial um, service provider. And um, typically, those sorts of infrastructure, those sorts of networks cross paths with the RIANS network somewhere. And at, it's at those path crossings, they're called points of presence, where we make a patch and we connect you in. So you don't necessarily need to be a RIANS member. It helps, um, but uh, anybody can play.